So besides creating unique textures with Stable Diffusion, another really cool thing is doing retexturing. So texturing something, using that texture map, putting it into Stable Diffusion, and then getting out a different texture map. And it actually works really well. <laughs> so if you have some sort of texture and you put it into Stable Diffusion, like the image to image algorithm, there's another algorithm involving variation, which I didn't find as good, but the image to image one, it tends to respect boundaries pretty well. So if you have a dark boundary around your object, it'll tend to to not completely, but pretty well respect that boundary. And so there won't be very much bleeding um, into the rest of the train. Or So basically you can create a bunch of variations on an object and it'll, or on any sort of object or character. And it usually stays inside of the bounds and kind of creates a similar shape to what the shape was before. So this allows you to do some like really quick retexturing and the retextures are oftentimes so different that it looks like you're creating new things. So you can actually have some kind of 3D cutouts and then you can keep generating and generating and it'll like create all these new buildings or new trees or new characters and they'll all have this exact same kind of like the the uv map will be the same so you uh, you'll end up with very quick new characters or new buildings and it's just it's like it's crazy how fast it is too because like this is one of those algorithms that can finish in like 10 seconds like or even sometimes less than that and i think in the future like this could become like a real-time thing where like if you wanted something to be another like this is borderline real time because you could put this into some sort of like hashing system and then you could like if you had some sort of predictive text or like you could get this off to the point where it seems real time this is a way that in the future you might be able to just like retexture your model's face to make them happy or sad or like have all of those emotions and then just do the retexturing on the fly and have more natural textures and even kind of really basic games like this this it doesn't need to be some sort of triple a feature like this is something that like you could add into a, a pixel art game or i don't i haven't even looked at some of these ideas but even the idea of just retexturing particular parts of the body i like there's a lot of real Really interesting stuff that you could do with this but anyways the basic idea is that you take an image you put it into this retexturing algorithm you get back out a texture and then you can kind of do that a bunch of times and get a bunch of variations uh, so here I have a castle that is being we have a bunch of different ones for that I also did it for the trees and it works pretty well um, there's like some images don't retexture super well but for the most part a lot of them work really well uh, and yeah and then oh I also did some 3d models too so here is an x-wing and so this one bled a little bit into the other part but it still kept enough of its shape that I think it is a really interesting example. And then there's also this kind of 3D anime person that like, um, I did some interesting ones with it and like a wolf character and a few other things, but, um, and it didn't give extreme changes, but it kept the same style. So it, it's kind of interesting because like pretty good for creating a bunch of like unique anime type characters. Um, the X-Wing one though is like, so, okay. The other thing too, is that a lot of the, uh, texturing ends up being lower quality texturing. Cause so for instance, in this X-Wing one, we're going from 2000, 2000, thousand pixels to like 500 500 pixels so there's like an eight size down sampling of the the materials so that's why they look a little bit more blurry and there's also some uh metallic and some other material maps that i kind of didn't do with the mapping for and i don't i need to try it out but i, I really don't think that it would do a very good job of changing those in a reasonable fashion because they're really weird maps i should try it though because they might have i should really try that i haven't tried that um but yeah one really big improvement to this in the future would be a lot of the textures right now for pre-built models are fairly compact so because you kind of want to reduce space of how much your texture takes up, you push all the objects really close together and then you did the UV mapping from there. Uh, but one of the issues with that is that it'll cause a lot of bleeding in something like stable diffusion. So if there's some sort of way of kind of separating those objects out a little bit and then doing the stable diffusion, you could kind of cut them all out individually and then send them in. But it's actually really nice to send them in as a full picture because then the algorithm tends to, it, it does a really good job of creating a consistent style within a singular image. So if you could kind of just cut out all of the textures like push a little bit of distance between them all so that there isn't any sort of bleeding between the different parts of the object and then putting it back together that would be a really i think you can do that with the uv map actually oh, i need to think about this a little bit but there's some really cool things that you could do with that where you separate out all the objects put it in a stable diffusion stable dif diffuse it and send it back put, um use kind of like a reverse mapping to get it all into the same place i think it'd be really cool this is pretty exciting <laughs> If you have a fancy GPU, you should be able to do this right out of the gate with some sort of GUI. But if you don't, then you'll probably have to use something like Google Colab and their free tier actually gives you enough RAM or VRAM to run this model. So uh, especially at the five by or 500 by 500 type shape. So it's actually pretty awesome that you can just kind of do this out of Google Colab. And the directions are pretty straightforward. There's like um, a few different sources that you can use, but uh, for the most part, you just kind of 